Hello everyone, Bill Adams, Realtor, Coldwell Banker Realty with you. Hey, joining me today is Teddy Greenberg. Teddy is the owner of High Desert Auto and Home Renewal. Um, let's learn a little bit about Teddy's business. Welcome, Teddy. Hi. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Hey, it's a pleasure. Why don't we start by you telling us about your business? Well, um, I, I do uh, mobile auto detailing. Um, it's a business basically of anything from washing your car to, you know, taking scratches out of your paint to cleaning your motor to touch up paint repair. There's a million different things that auto detailing can have just depending on what the detailer or the business does. You know, a lot of people get detailing confused and think that it's just washing cars or it's just waxing cars or it's whatever. Really, it's as much as the detailer or the person that operates the detailing business can provide. Which is why, like for me, for instance, I can do all the stuff a normal detailer can do, but I can also do things like minor body work, like touch up paint repair, you know, things like that, that other detailing shops may not have. Or I can do a little bit more when it comes to paint correction. I can wet sand. I can do a lot of different things that uh, other detail shops may not be able to provide. So it just, it just kind of goes, and that's kind of why I have the renewal aspect involved with it. Mm -hmm. Kind of gives it like not just the car taken care of. That's why I didn't really want to have detailing in my in my name. I wanted it to be more like renewal, so I can kind of bring it back. And whatever I can't do, you can take it to a body shop or whatever it needs to be done. And I can help direct you there as well. Okay, fantastic. How did you get into the business? I've actually been uh, detailing since uh, about 20 years old. I got into the actual business. I started out actually in auto glass because a long time ago, not as much today, there used to be a lot of auto glass guys at car washes. And I got into the sales there and as I was doing sales there, the car wash owners, because I would be at about 40 locations throughout the time I did it, uh, I met lots of different car wash owners and they saw I could sell. So I like, hey, you know what? Why don't you come work in the car wash industry? So then I got into the car wash industry and threw out a lot of different things. Basically, uh, I got, I pretty much learned the entire business from vacuuming vehicles to managing multiple facilities. And doing all that, I was about one position from the top of the company and I had made a lot of ch changes in my life at the time, I was about 30 years old. And I decided like, hmm, do I wanna stay here or would I wanna go do more? And at this time I was already doing uh, detailing on the side and uh, also doing my job at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I decided I'm gonna do this full time. So by doing it full time, I just kind of grew it and I, 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 I'm here, here I am today. Uh -huh. You know, I, I hear that similar kind of story from a lot of people that had their own business uh, it sort of had took on a life of its own based on what they were doing for someone else. And then they went off and uh, did their own thing and were very successful at it. So, yes. hey, good for you. Along, the, uh, along that journey, I'm sure there must have been some memorable experiences. Um, care to share uh, one that stands out? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I'll kind of try to put this in a... Cause I would like, you know, kind of give you the message at the same time because I'm sure a lot of people deal with a lot of this. But basically, I would say I got hit from a boulder from from the sky of with every kind of problem that you could think of from losing my brother. Mm. I'm, I'm a recovering alcoholic, so I started this business fresh out of recovery. Um, I had vehicles blow up on me, literally driving down the freeway. I had my car I have right now, literally brand new car that blew up. I had to get it replaced by the dealer but under warranty, thankfully. Wow. Um, pretty much any kind of thing that I could think of has, has happened to me. I mean, literally right now, um, like I was kind of telling you before, is that um, I'm fighting with, you know, esophagitis. I have uh, Crohn's, hypothyroidism, uh, hi hiatal hernia, and, you know, mm -hmm. But there weren't a lot of options at that time because right? I got sick while I was running the business. Mm -hmm. So it kind of just turned into an all in kind of thing. And it realized like it's either do this or I go sit somewhere and be get sicker or however uh -huh. else because there's not really a lot of options when you have to deal with recovery and survival at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I realized that it really came down to my choice and will to want to be here and do what I want to do and the support from not just you know, my family and friends, but from the clients who I, who I had served showed uh -huh. me what was so magical 
about creating something of my own. It was something yeah. that could become mm -hmm. my own to hold on to and I could, you know, learn to love it. And that's kind of the joy of, I think, running your own business is you, it becomes kind of like your baby. Uh -huh. you, you get what you put into it. You know what I mean? If you, if you take good care of it, if you take care of all the clients in it, if you, you know, you, you, when, when no one's looking, you know, wash the car, do little things to kind of make it better, it, it becomes part of you and, and it doesn't seem like work anymore. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, what a great message to share. I mean, you certainly have seen uh, seen a lot of hard times, but... Uh, That's a short uh, form. Yeah. That was the short form I tried yeah. to... <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, you, you put that in, you know, you, you leverage that into creating your business and immersing yourself in your business. Uh, being successful at that. So congratulations to you. Thank you. Uh, so just looking at the business uh, from a day-to-day -day standpoint, what are some of the challenges that you face? Hmm. Um, I'm sure every small business has the same issues, you know, growing. Mm -hmm. In this time of day, it's very hard to find, you know, good employees as much as it, as it used to be, you know. But um, at that time as well, you know, you have, it's a fluctuating economy. So sometimes people want to spend, sometimes people don't want to spend. Mm -hmm. um, and then on top of that, um, in the auto detailing industry, since it's a growing industry as well, there's always new things being added into it. So a lot of times, if I'm not paying attention to what the new products are, the new you know, equipment, things like that, there could be another service that pops up or there's something that's mm -hmm. you know, pretty simple to add to something I already know how to do that I can miss. And then that's money that the business itself loses. And then on top of it, keeping your customers happy. That's, mm -hmm. that's probably the number one most important of all of them is you have to keep your customers happy. Oh, yeah. In a business where repeat business is uh, is, is huge, that's really your future. You yes. got to keep your customers happy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so speaking of your customers, what what do your customers say? What What is it that they like about your service? I think what I really like, what my customers like about my services the best is that I never sell somebody something they don't need. And I try to explain to them the best I can of why they need what I'm telling them about. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times when we buy something or someone tries to sell us something, they don't always explain fully what they're trying to sell us and it can leave a bad taste in our mouth. And mm -hmm. I think because I take the time to really explain and, and, and also only sell them what they need. You know, I'm never trying to upsell them on something that doesn't need to be sold. I'm never trying to, you know, cheat them out of something or do something like, I'm always trying to, you know, give them the best quality. And I think that that's what they prefer. And even at the times when I told you all the things that happened, because I mean, I have, I have employees now, but before I had employees and it's just me, they saw me struggle through a lot of what I went through. Mm -hmm. And that even when they had made their, um, you know, like prepays or contracts or whatever, I never let that, I never skipped a step. I always, mm -hmm. I always made sure that I, I kept my word. And even when it hurt me to do so, I made sure that it would need to be. And that was what I think my, my clients respect about me the most is that they know that they can trust me. They know mm -hmm. I'm going to, to do what I say I'm going to do, and I'm going to do it at the best quality possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what motivates you? Honestly, what motivates me, and the whole reason I even really started a business, was that I want people to... See, I think we in this day and age, we need more role models for for people to see that they can achieve anything they want. I did this because I wanted and I felt like this was what I wanted to do. So I realized through that, it motiv the mo what kept motivating me was that I knew through my success, I could help lift other people into success because they would see all the things that I've went through mm -hmm. and that they would see like, wow, he's done that. I can do that. And um, so I'm gonna get uh, get a little teary because I'm thinking about the next part. But uh, to me, the most important thing of what I started it for was that I would be able to take people who are sitting in dark situations mm -hmm. and bring that light back to their eyes. To me, that's probably the. biggest joy that I could ever receive mm -hmm. because out of life, that's really all I want. Uh -huh. I want to see other people succeed and smile 
because I know what it feels like to suffer. I know what it feels like to be there, not want to get up, to not want to do anything, to feel like everything in life is on top of you. Mm -hmm. But you look inside yourself and it takes, sometimes it takes just the one person who reaches out and actually feels that same suffering because they've probably been in that same place and they help lift you out mm -hmm. and they bring that fire back into you. Yeah. There's no other feeling on this planet that touches that. I don't care what car you buy. I don't care what house you buy. Nothing can touch that. And if you felt that, then you're already successful in life mm -hmm. because you'll, you'll never feel anything better. Yeah. Sorry. No, no problem. What a tremendous message. Thank you for sharing that. So on a lighter side, <laughs> you know, building a business, uh, dealing with your challenges in life, what do you do for fun? <laughs> uh, well, I have, a, I have a pet lizard. He's All right. My, yeah, he's my buddy. His name's Jack. He's a, he's a bearded dragon. He's uh -huh. free roam, so he can just kind of do his thing. So he's kind of like my kid, so I do stuff with him. Uh -huh. Then I have, you know, I have my friends and stuff. I don't, I don't drink or stuff, so I obviously don't go too, too party. But I mean, I'll go to like a, you know, I'll go hang out at the club or something and shoot some pool or uh -huh. talk or dance or whatnot. Or I like to write music. I do a lot of music. Um, I'm a hip hop artist. I also do rock and country. I'm a lyricist. So I do that too as like, kind of like my therapy release. Uh -huh. I've been doing music probably since I was like eight years old. So it's, it's really huge for me. Um. And on top of that, uh, I'm also really involved with my Buddhist organization. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a Jewish Buddhist, but I, I do a lot with my, with my Buddhist organization. It's called SGI USA. And um, it's kind of been part of that support group I told you mm -hmm. that has brought me out of the dark. They've kind of been that, that thing that's been there for me. That gives, mm -hmm. me, that gives me light. And on top of that, you know, I've been able to network through them. And, to, and like, there's a lot of things. I give them a lot because... They taught me how to chant and chanting has been one of the things um that has pretty much it's it's that daily like i pray to god and i do all that but how i explain chanting to people is whenever i chant nam yola renge kyo it basically it it takes me to another level and uh -huh. that's and that's been like it's like it's like adding another tool to your belt so mm -hmm. that's kind of another thing that i do and i do that pretty frequent I do it twice a day and, and when i do that I actually just pray for the people that have lost. I say their names in the morning and night. Mm -hmm. To me, the the best thing in life is is growing myself. So I do things that, yeah, I do things to keep myself happy, but a lot of things I try to do are to create, you know, a better version of myself, working mm -hmm. out, things like that. So. Yeah. Wow. You know, Teddy, I really appreciate you sharing your business with us. More importantly, thanks for sharing your journey with us. Uh, thanks for being here today. Hey folks, please reach out to Teddy if you have a need for auto um, renewal, auto detailing, um, or any questions about that, Teddy's here for you. This is Bill Adams, Realtor, Caldwell Banker Realty. Thank you. Thank you so much.